Hello, Corinda parents and students. I'm Julie Arnold. I have worked here at the school at Corinda for quite a long time, but I'm now only one day a week. I'm at QUT full time these days. I thought I'd pop in and share with you an important routine that happens in our school that you probably don't know about because it always happens inside school. You are going to see these things called reading routines popping up in student lessons and I thought it would be useful for you to understand what we're trying to accomplish with them. These um, routines are a great um, opportunity for a parent to kind of get involved a little bit and work with their student about what they're doing with them. Normally a reading routine is a 10 minute activity that students do um, once a week if we can in each subject but it's usually only over seven or eight weeks of the term so you won't necessarily see them in every single week um, and what we're doing is looking at a short piece of text that we read carefully and just try to drill into a particular reading skill with it. You'll find in the student planner if you look at it that there is a place that they can re record those reading routines if they want to there but lots of teachers record them on their one have kids record them on the one note instead. I thought what I might do today is just step you through an example of a reading routine so you can see how it goes. And then if your kids have any questions or you would like to get in touch with me through the school and ask how you could help with that, then uh, by all means do that. All right, so let's go. Let's pretend um, we're kids doing a reading routine. Um, I am gonna speed it up a little bit for the purposes of this video, but let's just say you're in an essential English class. This is what might happen. The teacher will, will say, can you record? So let's pretend it's week six. We're going to be focused on vocabulary. So this is the reading skill identifying vocabulary that we're going to do. And we would ask the student to just pop the date in there um, in the recording sheet. There are variations on the recording sheet. Um, as long as the kids are engaged and, and the teachers can see that these are happening, that's absolutely fine. Here are the steps for effective reading that we're trying to promote when we do a reading routine. So there are five of them. If you're gonna read something well, you're gonna have inside your head what the structure is. So you wanna identify the text. To read well, you need to understand whether you're reading a story, so your head expects a story kind of structure, or a, a newspaper article, a news story is quite a different thing that you're expecting to read. So what is it that we're trying to read? The second step is preparing to, to read. Once you get a, a topic for your reading, it's a really great idea to uh, think about what you already know, predict what you're going to read, that kind of thing. So we call step one, uh, step two, preparing to read. It's like um, turning the lights on in your head. So if number one is a bit of a roadmap for the reading, number two is turning the lights on. The third one is purpose setting. What, what am I trying to achieve with this text? What is my teacher going to ask me to do at the end? Often for reading routines, it is a really small thing that they're asking for that they can check. But sometimes, especially when we're um, learning from home, the teacher might decide to extend that a little bit or add a writing activity. For reading routines, we always read them twice. The best way this happens is if the student first reads it by themselves without anything else to distract them. And ideally, the second reading happens for, for an adult. Sometimes the, teacher, sometimes the teacher might be able to record themselves, or maybe this is something that you can help your student with. If they're not finding it hard, they can absolutely do it themselves. Fine. And the last step is actually that you do something with your reading. So those are our steps. Let me show you a little bit about how it looks. So here's the identifier. So I'm going to show you a text. It's called Impacts of Improperly Sealed Landfill Sites. Um, the author for this text is a scientist and the genre is a kind of an explanation that a scientist might make for a general audience. This is the kind of thing we're expecting to read. The next stage is to prepare for reading. I thought it would be a good idea to do vocabulary for this. So what I'm looking for in this essential English class is that students understand the kinds of words that are being used that turn this into, that make this a scientific text, even though it's a reasonably accessible one. So I need the, the students to know that they're coming across vocab like polymer chemist or nanoparticles, that kind of thing. So this is our preparation. Sometimes we prepare by um, skimming the text or 
you know, just thinking about what we know about it or what we think about it and she does all sorts of The third step is reading with a purpose in mind. So today, I want you, when you read this, to think my purpose for reading is that I can identify the features that make this writing for me. Right? What is it about the words that are used in this text that make it for me? And then we read. So if this is something that your student comes home with or, or has at home for their online learning, you'll see that they have a text to read. And if you're working with them, make sure they do read it. Um, if it comes home in a video form, make sure that we pause long enough. So with this one, here's the text that we're going to read. You can see it's not very long, um, which is fine for this. We're, we're looking for detailed reading. So that's what you do there. And then for the second reading, in an ideal world, you have someone else read it. It's really, when a text is important, reading it twice is absolutely essential. And listening to a teacher or an adult who's a fluent reader is great too. Even our best readers don't pronounce as well as expert teachers or people who are really experienced readers. So no matter how old your kid is, how old your student is, they can always benefit from being read to. All right, so that's the second reading. If, if the student is a strong reader, at this point, they can um, highlight features of the text. So you can see here, you can see before that there were some guidelines for highlighting. Um, if your student at home isn't a strong reader or they're trying to work on things, then they can absolutely take this opportunity to just read. What kind of, if you don't mind, Feel what that feels like to just read along with an expert reader. <laughs> I've said expert and now I'm going to muck it up, but never mind. Have a go with me. Impacts of improperly sealed landfill sites. The growing amount of waste produced in society has a huge impact on the environment. Many of the materials disposed of as general waste can last in the environment anywhere from hundreds to thousands of years. Professor Andrew Holmes, an emeritus professor at the University of Melbourne and a polymer chemist, notes that for most plastics, normal degradation leaves particles that can still be harmful to living things, nanoparticles or microparticles. The existence of this waste has significant short and long-term impacts on plants and animals. When waste is improperly disposed of, not only is it hazard to animals that may make mistake it for food, it can lead to an increase in environmental pollutants. For example, if improperly sealed or if the seal degrades, landfill sites where most Australian waste ends up may release leachate into surrounding groundwater. Leachate is a liquid pollutant caused by decomposing waste. It contains high levels of heavy metals, toxic chemical compounds, pesticides and solvents. Once in the water system, leachate continues to negatively impact organisms far from the original site through water and soil contamination, as well as viral immunization. Okay, so that's the second video. I hope you enjoyed it. I just really wanted to put that out there because that feeling of being read to and having a really solid um, understanding and chance to, to read something properly is super important. The final part of reading routine is thinking. Now, the thinking might be that they're highlighting those language features that might be very specialised. You know, things like um, things like pollutants or degradation of specialised language. Evaluative language as it can be something um, like um, huge impact, um, improperly sealed. So, so words that evaluate. Your teacher, if, if they ask you to do something like this, will check that the responses students have made are okay. But, but we want to. After they've completed the reading routine mode, we want them to extend their thinking. For this activity, and it won't happen for every single one, I'm asking for a writing activity. This work play today. Um, obviously, this is just to show you what kind of things might happen. Sometimes we get to the end and we say, Right, kids, um, we want you to show your understanding at a deep level. So, the writing activity for this one was that we had students transform that writing from a, a more formal scientific piece <coughs> excuse me, 
to one that really could have a different downtime. So really um, make it so that it would be engaging for everyone to read. Something that might end up on a Facebook page, um, something that would be super easy for someone to understand. Um, when we do things this way, we can really see where the students understand the impact of the formal language and how they can manipulate the language. <coughs> In routine, I just um, wanted you to see that these kinds of things are going to come up in your online learning experience and you should feel comfortable talking to your children about what's expected. When they're done, it's a great idea to go back and, and tell their teacher how confident that they were and if they were really finding they were struggling, email them. You know, email the teacher, pop it up on the one night that they needed help or even um, mark it on the tracking sheet that they were struggling with. I hope that some of your online learning experiences are proving enjoyable and fruitful. We would love to know if you can do that because anything that we can do to help you can do that. Thanks very much.